Are you facing the difficult decision of trying to decide whether to make it mandatory for your teams to return back to work? Are you facing the difficulty of investors or shareholder pressures trying to tell you that, look, if you don't have people working at the office, no matter how much you know, data is showing, you know, they're not going to be as productive unless they're actually working and that you can see them. Are you facing that difficult decision as a leader whether to you know, continue to let people work from home or even in a hybrid um, environment? These are difficult decisions all of the leaders in large organizations, small and large, are facing. And what is most challenging is that there isn't much support for leaders in helping them make that decision. So in today's live, I want to focus on trying to help you in making that decision. What are some of the things to take into consideration, whether considering forcing people to return back to work or going forward with a hybrid where sometimes they work from home or sometimes they work from work or they work permanently from home and, uh, you know, and report to work occasionally. So, so this live is focused in helping you with that. If we haven't met before, my name is Fahim Karim, and I'm an employee engagement expert. And I work with companies that are small and medium-sized, faith and value-based. And I help them in increasing their productivity and helping them reach their revenue and company uh, financial objectives by focusing on employee engagement. And the way I do that is that I meet with the executive team and I also meet with the employees and I look at everything in great detail. And then I try to find out what's the root cause of causing, that's causing the employee disengagement. And then together we co-create a roadmap. A roadmap to implement disengaged to dynamic team solution back into your workplace. It's something that you can implement it yourself, and if you need help, I'm there to help you. And you know, as someone who has managed billions of dollars in business and has successfully planned for contingency for very large operations and work with colleagues across the globe, I love to take teams and turn them around so that everyone feels seen and heard. So the, the topic that I wanted to give some points about is that decision of whether to make people work, uh, force people work, return back to work or to allow them to continue to work remotely. Here are some of the data that I want to quickly share with you. Some of the myths, according to neural leadership, there are four basic myths that, about uh, working remotely. One of them has to do with myth that it's, they're not productive. The employees working remotely are not going to be productive. You can put that uh, myth to the rest. By the way, before we get more into this topic, I'd love to hear from you. Put in the comments, what are some of the challenges you're facing when it comes to this decision of allowing people to work remotely or forcing them to come back to work in your organization? And what are some of the challenges and questions you have in mind that you're struggling with? And what are some of the things that you're seeing that your employees are saying that they're struggling with when it comes to remote or hybrid work? So one of the things they, uh, the data shows, and there was a study done by uh, University of Chicago that shows that uh, employees worked 30% more than normal during the shutdown. So in last year when it was in COVID, the employees actually worked 30% more. And according to Microsoft, they said that they found that, that the communication between uh, workers, actually between employees, it went up 25% after 6 p.m. So not only they were being productive, more productive, but actually some of them are actually experiencing burnout because they're working so much. So the argument for productivity is not, is not it's just a myth. It's really not uh, it, it's going to stand up against data. Also, the, uh, the other myth is that innovation will suffer. If you look at it, 
you know, whenever you want to think about something creative and something really inspiring, is it your workplace that you really think about? That you want to sit at your desk and ponder about that really innovative idea? Well, it, it is usually at a place where you think about where it's quiet, serene, away from work, right? And so the data also shows that. It shows that there was a survey done with 800, with, there was a survey, they, they, they surveyed 800 teams, and it was published in 2010, and it found that individuals are more likely to come up with more and better ideas when they don't interact with others. So again, that myth that innovation will suffer is not based on actual facts. Uh, also, it shows that hybrid work arrangements, on the other hand, allow for employees to create an optimal conditions for insight by making time for quiet reflection wherever those may ha happen first. Meaning that by giving the employees opportunity to work from home, there is opportunity for them to have quiet reflections and to actually come up with more solutions and innovative ideas, which they're not usually able to do. Think about it when we were at work. Phone calls ringing, your c colleagues are talking, your mind is just wandering off. Some of your best work actually happen after 5 p.m., be honest, right? I mean, but with the people having employees, your employees or teams having the opportunity to work remotely, that is actually a better opportunity for innovation. The next myth that is the hybrid work is inherently unfair. Now, this may have some basis. One of the things that the neural leadership has discovered from the research is that there are 150 kinds of biases. And one of the bias is called the long distance bias. What do I mean by that? So what, what happens is as leaders, sometimes, and these biases, they're not necessarily bad or a good thing, it's just bias that's inherent in all of us. And so being aware of these biases will allow us as leaders to make proper and more fair decisions. So the way this long distance bias works is that Leaders tend to feel that sometimes, who are not conscious of this bias, oh, the ones that I get to see, they're truly really working, the ones who are here in the office. Those guys off, you know, working from home, I don't know about them. I just don't feel like they're doing any work. I don't know. Maybe they're just watching, you know, Netflix. That's a bias that we have. So when we're aware of this bias, then we can actually be making more conscious decisions that, you know what, this is not true. Data shows employees are more productive, but, and I do have a conscious bias as a leader of having long distance bias, tend, tend to favor more those who are nearby versus those who are not visible. One more bias that they make us aware of uh, is that, uh, which is the, let me just quickly bring it up, uh, is the bias of, um, Yeah, so one of them is the bias of uh, long distance, and the other one, uh, I, I don't have it here, but the it is basically something that we need to be aware of these biases. And without being aware of these biases, we tend to make judgments of, or decisions towards forcing people to come back to work without really being uh, wise. So, for example, you know, the, the, the data also shows many employees who are actually very talented are quitting their jobs. One of the examples is in the hospitality industry. They're seeing a large number. Granted, there is because of the exposure to, you know, customers putting their families and themselves at risk. However, that's not the main reason. Having, going through the COVID has given opportunity for employees to really reevaluate what's more important in life. And unless we as leaders are being compassionate and caring and taking into consideration what their uh, anxieties are coming back to work, we're really gonna make it very difficult for our employees to make that decision. And we may also see people are going to quit, right? Well, sometimes you may have people saying, well, I got a lot of people still hanging, you know, some people left. Well, guess what? Usually the first people to leave are your most talented people. And the ones that probably haven't left yet, not all of them, but some of them, is probably ones who cannot go anywhere else. So 
the, having that mindset that well, I have, I always have people that are around is not necessarily uh, the best talent that you want to have. So bear that in mind. Imagine, God forbid, like I mentioned, uh, like I mentioned in my weekly video uh, this week, on uh, you know, real estate versus talent. Don't lose the battle. Don't don't lose the war on talent by trying to win the battle of the real estate. If we're just solely focused on real estate, we're missing out on the big picture. Rather, we should look at strategically, what is it that we need? What type of talents do we need? And how do we need them to, uh, how, you know, what's the level of productivity we're, we're needing? And, and focus on that as a strategy to guide us on the decision versus fo solely focusing on real estate. I hope that was of benefit to you and I'd love to hear more from you. So please leave me a comment below. If you're watching this uh, post live, I would love to hear from you what are some of the challenges you are facing in your organization that is, uh, help, that is you know, helping you to make the decision on uh, whether to allow people to permanently work remotely or force them to come back to work. Or what are some of the challenges you're facing uh, in trying to make this decision? And I'd love to hear from you.